You are listening to KC Sports Network, the number one podcast network for today's Kansas City sports fans. With former players from your favorite teams, informed perspectives, and former insiders, this is the place for you. KC Sports Network is proudly presented by Emprise Bank, your partner in Possible. What is up, everybody? Welcome into this week's edition of KCSNU Kickoff here on the KCSNU YouTube channel. Thank you for tuning in. As always, make sure you like the like the video, subscribe to the channel, so you can catch all of your favorite content for your Kansas Jayhawks, your Kansas State Wildcats, or your Missouri Tigers. If you're a fan of any of those teams, make sure to subscribe here. I'm joined, as always, by my partner in crime, Matt Lane. Matty, how are you doing today? Listen, um, we're coming off a rough week. We're coming off a rough week in the picks, but it was good football, right? That That's all I root for. Um, so, you know, I'm happy. We had a good good slate of college games last week. Decent slate this week. Hopefully, hopefully it's as exciting, and I have turned the page on the Chiefs. This isn't a Chiefs podcast, but I've turned the page on the Chiefs versus the Colts. I'm ready for this upcoming weekend and to get into this college football talk right now, buddy. Absolutely. Love the college football talks. As always, we're going to start with our one big thing, but before we get into that, Gotta say, I'm dealing with a cold right now, playing through a little bit of uh, playing through a little bit of pain. So, um, it, I apologize if there's any sniffling, sneezing, coughing, clearing of throats. If I sound a little groggy, uh, just want you to know, I just gotta bring you guys this content, whatever it takes. So, Matt, what is your one big thing from this last week? Ooh. All right, guys, it's time. We've done it. Every year, I pick a new college football team that I root for this year. That year, last year. Cincinnati Bearcats, they were the team. They were the unofficially official KCSN Discord team. This year, I, a committee of one, have decided that that unofficially official team for the KCSN Discord is our Washington Huskies, also known as Washington Huskies, going forward. I love this Washington Huskies football team. They're so much fun. If you have not gotten a chance to watch them yet, you know, coming off of, I understand why nobody would watch the Jimmy Lake led Washington team. They did. They look like they hated life. They thought right. they, they hated it. Kalen DeBoer comes in. You know, if you don't know him, he had been a long, you know, a coach at Fresno, uh, Fresno state the last couple of years. He was there before Indiana there back and forth. So much fun on offense. This team hasn't scored less than 39 points in a single one of their games so far this year. And that game that they scored 39 in, was against Michigan State that included, I believe, three fourth and goal turnover on downs because they just couldn't quite punch it in, and they still scored 39 points. Michael Penix has come in. He's been you know, the quarterback there, obviously, and he's been absolutely fantastic. He's pushed his way into the Heisman race. There you have three wide receivers. Two of them are draft eligible, and Jalen McMillan and, uh, I, oh, God, Ja Ivan Polk, I believe, is how you pronounce his name. They have some defensive ends that are fun to watch. This is just a fun Offensive football team that has enough defensive talent that they are going to be fun to watch every single week. I'm disappointed, guys. I ordered some Washington Huskies gear to show as I made this announcement, and the tropical storms of the Southeast have delayed it like two days. So I won't have it till next week. So we're wa- rocking the 2022 KCS and Discord team, not the tw- or 2023 season, draft season one. But yes, Washington. Uskies, the unofficially official team of the KCSN Discord. Get on board now. They play actually tonight. We record this on Friday morning. They play tonight. They play a banger at the Rose Bowl versus UCLA late yeah. night, Pac 12 after dark. Tune in. That's going to be a blast of a game and watch our team take home the W. The Washington Huskies. Bottom dollar. Let's go. Ooh. Throw up them W's. Eat those W's in, in the name of Jameis Winston. Shout out to that guy. Probably not going to play on Sunday, by the way. That's disappointing. Yeah, Andy Dalton's going to be there. Oh, you know, <laughs> never mind. I was going to make it very poorly. No, no jokes. Continue on. That's fine. Uh, okay. Uh, going kind of relating to uh, tonight's game, the Washington Huskies. I was going to find that line real quick, minus two and a half. Uh, maybe by the time you're listening, uh, maybe I'll put it out on Friday. Who knows well, what, what I'll do with this podcast. But, um, Minus two and a half for the Huskies. Hammer the minus two and a half. Um, Would. Absolutely hammer that minus two and a half. That's a bonus pick for you. Um, you're welcome. But that kind of goes into my point of uh, uh, of my one big thing this week. Picks across the board here at KCSNU, here at really anywhere you can get picks, bad. It was a bad week for gambling in college football. A bad week for picks against the spread in college football. Not good at all. Uh, I went four, two, and one. Maddie, you went two and five last week. I got the we one because of the, uh, uh, the push of from the Arkansas uh, kicker from boinking it off the top of the upright. 
Um, also, I saw somebody say like this is that's like a one in a thousand year play, and it like happened like last week. I don't know if you saw that. Like there were two field goals that missed like that. Um, I can't remember where it was from. I think it was Wyoming or something like that. I'll I'll find it. I'll I'll retweet it. You go follow me on Twitter at Tucker D Franklin. But there's been multiple kicks this season hit off the top of the upright, which is an odd thing. Um, yes, very we- very bad week of uh, of picks all around. Hopefully, we can write that ship. Um, I'm colder than cold right now i thought i was gonna take thursday night off of the thursday night football and i was like you know what i'll hop over there place a couple cheeky bets lost every one of them didn't didn't win a single one um i'm one for my last 15 on bets so i am colder than cold um i need an easy win i need a good win to get the ball rolling Uh, hopefully we can give you some easy wins here you know, listen, hopefully you're riding with Uskies tonight. Get get yourself yeah. back on the get yourself back on the win train. Uh so if you're listening, um, I guess you just fade both of our picks. If you listen to the rest of the show, you want to make some money, just fade both of us. Tucks, I went two and five last week in college picks. Tucks on a one and fifteen losing streak right now. Maybe you just fade us. Just listen to the rest of the show and fade us and make some easy cash. Absolutely. I think that's probably the right thing to do. And and <laughs> let's go ahead and Maddie and dive into these local games. Oh, let's do it. This is a good one. It's I, I I'm really interested in this matchup, by the way, uh, which is kind of odd. Iowa State versus Kansas. Uh, this is a that's a two thirty game time in Lawrence, Kansas. Uh, that'll be on your ESPN two on the old dial. Uh, I'm gonna start off by saying Kansas is home dogs. Thoughts, Matty? Garbage. <laughs> I am no fan of the Kansas Jayhawks. I am no fan of their basketball team, their football team, whatever it may be. I don't like Kansas. I don't necessarily like Missouri or K-State, really, for that fact of the matter. I just don't like Kansas. Show this football team some respect, people. Like, if you are somehow involved in any of this stuff, with making spreads in Vegas, if you are involved in AP voting, show this team some respect. This football team, their resume right now is a top 15 team, arguably a top 10 team. I don't think you can really stack up many resumes against them right now. They're at home. They're undefeated. They have a quarterback in contention for the Heisman, probably arguably a top three Heisman uh, vote getter if you had to call it right now. How is Iowa State rolling into town as the favorite right now? I like Iowa State. I think Iowa State, Matt Campbell's done a great job keeping this team very competitive this year when they should have been in a down year. But a favorite? Whew, that, that's that's bad, bud. I agree. Uh, Kansas is playing good ball right now. Not something you can say a whole lot. They've kind of got the hot hand. Iowa State coming off that loss to Baylor, which that game was just a weird game all around. Also, they were favored against Baylor, too, which I thought was weird. It seemed like easy money uh, to kind of take Baylor in that game. We'll talk about Baylor later in this program, but <laughs> Baylor's a weird team. This is the Big 12. I, I Honestly, in the Big 12, I think that almost every game's a toss-up in the Big 12 at this point uh, just because of how competitive it is. And, I, and this game... I think is probably close, but I don't know about favoring Iowa State in this game, especially at home. So if you think about it, that you, you usually get three points at home uh, for home, that, like home field advantage in air quotes. So they think this is a six point swing that the that Iowa State is really six points better uh, than Kansas. And I don't think that I agree with that. I think, and as a Missouri fan, this is not very fun for me to say. <laughs> Kansas is a good football team. Um, and they've looked good. There are some cracks in the armor uh, a little bit against Duke. You could see a little bit of holes of like, okay, that's maybe where they can get taken advantage of here and there. Uh, but man, if they can take care of business against Iowa State, that, they're going to be. We're, gonna be like, we're running at we're like running out of teams to say can actually like that are the test, I guess, for Kansas, yeah. right? Like at first it was supposed to be, oh, now they're going to go play West Virginia, but it turns out West Virginia might be like really bad. So that is what it is. But then Houston, everybody thought they were supposed to be a ranked team. Maybe Houston's not so good. And I don't, I don't mean this to diminish anything Kansas has done. Like they've taken every time they've been presented with a more difficult challenge, they have taken it in stride mm-hmm. one and look good doing so. I think I want to say, I think that Iowa state's a good like barometer now coming up. Cause if you go back and look at Iowa state, they've played close enough versus Baylor. I don't think the game was quite as close as the final score says, but they were close. They were competitive mm-hmm. against Baylor, who was a, you know, top 10 team last year. They're very competitive this year. Iowa State beat Iowa, who isn't a good football team that has no offense, but the Iowa State still beat this team that's going to go bowling. Like, all of a sudden now, you're facing a team that entered the year expecting to get into a bowl game. They're probably going to end the year getting a bowl game. They're coming to Kansas while you're undefeated and had all this hype. This is the game that if you win, I don't think anybody can make any more questions about it. Like, Iowa State's undoubtedly a better win than Duke or than West Virginia. 
this is the game. And I think this is the first time they might be over like challenged extremely hard athletically. Iowa State has probably better athletes in Kansas. I don't know if you can yeah. say the same about Duke. I don't know if you can say that Houston does actually. They get some athletes, but like this is just a game. So I'm in trying to see it. Matt Campbell's a great coach. Lance Leopold, great coach. Maybe you finally have a team that can slow down Kansas's offense a little bit. It's not just about outscoring them, but maybe Kansas doesn't drop a 40 bomb or whatever they've been hit putting on everybody in this game because of Matt Campbell and that defense. But like this is the final step. You beat this game and you're a bona fide good team. No questions asked, I think. I would agree with that. And what's really fun is Houston plays Tulane this week. So uh, if if Tulane beats Houston, uh, Kansas State fans are going to give it to KU fans. Uh, so, Maddie, who are your prospects to watch in this game? I know that they, both sides got some dudes on them. Yeah, we're going to go with Xavier Hutchinson, uh, the wide receiver at Iowa State. Six foot three, 210 pounds. I mean, he's, everybody knows him because it's been watching Big 12 ball. He's been kind of the Iowa State's leading receiver the past couple of years, helping Brock Purdy look good along with Charlie Kolar, but like helping Brock Purdy look pretty good, getting him drafted. He's off to his best start, I think, since he's been at Iowa State this year. He's already matched his season high in touchdowns. He's already up to 400 yards. Like He's been a stud. He can get vertical. He's got good size. Like I actually think... I was kind of surprised he didn't come out into the draft when Brock Purdy did. He must have got information that he could improve his draft stock a little bit more by going back and showing what he can do. He's well on his way. So, like, I think he's kind of must-see TV. He might be the best wide receiver prospect in all of the Big 12. I'm sure him, Marvin Mims, would probably be my top two guys right now. Maybe I'm missing somebody I'm going to get yelled at for. But those would be my top two guys off the top of my head. Um Kansas, we've talked a lot about their guys. I think the big matchup that I'm excited to see, and he's not draft eligible, is against Kobe Bryant. And that's C-O-B-E-E. Not <laughs> a lot of different Kobe Bryants running around right now. Um, he's a soft, I believe he is a true sophomore. I don't think he's draft eligible right now, but he's been playing good ball. He's actually a you know good power five level athlete, so he might be able to match up with him. So that's where my eyes go in terms of a prospect matchup, even though only one of the guys is draft eligible right now. Pick against the spread, Iowa State, as I mentioned at the top, minus three. Iowa State's two and two against the spread. Kansas is four and zero oh against the spread on this young season. Uh, Maddie, what's your pick? Give me the Fighting Jayhawks. Um, to, I, whether it's close or not, I don't know. I don't trust Matt Campbell's Iowa State to come in as a as a road dog and win by more than three points. If they win, it will be by one or two points. I just, yeah, I'll take the Jayhawks here, and I actually think they pull it out. I'm going to pick KU uh, by the three points as well. Um, I think that same same kind of rationale for you. Home dogs, I love a good home dog. Um, that's one of my favorite things to take. And let's move on to the next game. This one is at 11 a.m. It's Kansas State, Texas Tech. That is in Manhattan, Kansas. Coming off of the big win, this is number 25, Kansas State. A uh, big win for the uh the Wildcats, almost called them the Power Cats. That's the name of their logo. Uh, the, the the Wildcats taking on Texas Tech, also coming off of a big win against Texas. Uh, mm. Two teams coming off some big wins. That's uh, ESPN Plus game. What are your thoughts on this game, Maddie? Two more teams in the middle to upper half of the Big Twelve, where all these teams are kind of even. So this is a it should be another banger. Um, can K State K State does this thing where they have a huge letdown before they play Oklahoma, go in and smoke Oklahoma. And then it's like afterwards, how are they going to play? Right? Like what is they getting next? Texas tech is a team that I don't know if they match up great versus K state. K state wants to play power football, run the ball down right. your throat. They want to be more physical than you. Texas tech's kind of trying to transition back to this air raid type offense. They have some guys on defense. So I don't know about the matchup from tech side, but I do wonder if K state sees a, maybe a small slide back, after coming off such a high and the win versus Oklahoma. So it, it, it'll be a fun game. I'm excited to see this game. It's two different, completely different styles of football. Do you get Oklahoma Adrian Martinez or do you get every other game he's ever played yeah. Adrian Martinez in this one? Yeah, it'll be interesting to see. There's a lot of good content here on the KCSNU YouTube channel. Uh, so make sure you go check that out if you are a Kansas State fan. Mm -hmm. we got the Three Mall Podcast. They, they'll they cover it way more better, way more better, way better more than better. we do, uh, especially they get more in-depth about the matchups and everything. So, uh, Maddie, who are, the, who are the prospects that you got your eye on for this game? I mean, same thing. We know we talked a lot about K-State guys um, so far, and we'll keep talking about them all year. So, you know, Cooper Beebe, veteran offensive tackle. He's been around K-State for a while. He's a very good tackle out there. Yeah. But across from him is – a guy, a dude, if you will, Tyree Wilson, uh, six foot seven, 270 ish pounds, I believe, 270, uh, five pounds. 
He initially went to Texas A&M. You guys that follow college football know how good Texas A&M has been recruiting. He went there as a freshman, played, recorded some stats, was productive on that Texas A&M defensive line, transfers over to Tech. Last year, he finally got his footing completely under him. He has been a complete monster so far this year. I, this is a potential round one guy here. So, like, you want to watch Tyree Wilson. You want to see him go up against a guy like Cooper Beebe, who maybe isn't a top two-day pick in the NFL draft, but he's going to probably get onto an NFL team. You want to see, you want to watch Tyree Wilson, especially in this game where K-State figures to try to run the ball a lot. That's something Wilson defends really well, as well as get after the passers. Like, he's He's bordering on musty TV if you're a Chiefs fan that knows the Chiefs like bigger, longer defensive ends because he is your Steve Spagnuolo prototype. Yeah, keep an eye on him as this uh, this Texas Tech team. They're, f- they're fun to watch. I like to watch this Texas Tech team play, um, and I think that they're, they're a good team. Now, Kansas State favored by 7.5 at home. Not a big shock that they're, I, I think, that this by this line. Uh, Texas Tech 2-2 two and two against the spread. Kansas State 3-1 and one against the spread. What do you like here, Matthew? This is tough. Um, I'm leaning Texas Tech because I go back and look through. They have the only team that they've lost to so far is NC State, who's a top 10 NC State team. Mm -hmm. They did lose to them on the road by uh, 13 points. So, like, they would have covered this same spread. But Texas Tech played really bad that game. It wasn't a divisional game. I think they get up a little bit more to play a Big 12 team. They go on the road. I don't know if K State is as good as NC State either. So, I think, I think NC State plays, has that similar, we're going to out. Physically, you at the line of scrimmage. Texas Tech is used to it. I think it's close. I think K-State wins, but I don't know if it's by seven and a half because I think Texas Tech is decent. I think they're a decent team. I think so, too. I think it's the same thing where I do think Kansas State wins. Do I think it's by more than a score? I don't think so. I think it's it might be a seven-point win, but seven and a half is one of those numbers where it's like, okay, it gives you a little bit of pause. Like, Do I think that they can win by a touchdown and a field goal? Uh, they, I mean, they could. But do I think it's likely? No. So I think I'm going to go Texas Tech as well. Both taking uh, the same picks on the Ooh. first two rounds. Here. Hard fade, everybody. Hard fade. We both. Yeah. Agree. So make sure to make sure to go with K Kansas uh, State and uh, Iowa State on our first two picks. As if you guys are wanting to make money, take those. Uh, Matty, we don't have to spend a whole lot of time on this game. Uh, number one, Georgia travels to uh, Columbia, Missouri. Take on the Missouri Football Tigers. That game is at 6.30 p.m. local time on the SEC Network. They should not air it because it will be a bloodbath. It will be not very fun for anybody. Um, Maddie, what do you think about this game? I can tell you what I think about this game, but I recorded a podcast earlier this week. Uh, Mizzou, that's who you can find it here on the KCSNU channel and wherever you find your podcasting on KCSN uh, Mizzou. So if you type in KCSN Mizzou, you should be able to find it wherever you get your podcast or in the video form here. So, Maddie, what are your thoughts? So I have two thoughts, and I'm sorry, Missouri fans, you can skip, you know, hit fast forward if you don't want to hear some negativity here. Um, Here's my two thoughts. One, what does Georgia do coming off of a close game versus a farly inferior team? Are they going to come out like Bama usually comes out when stuff like that happens and just completely thrash whoever they play? Like I'm interested to see what happens when Georgia is playing a cupcake team following a game that should have been a cupcake game that was a little bit closer than it needed to be. Are they going to come out for blood? And then number two, and this is the biggest storyline here, is Kirby going to go out there with the plan to showcase everything Georgia has to lure Luther Burden to Georgia next year because they were close to getting him in recruiting. He was one of the top, they were one of the top contenders. Is Kirby coming out there? Is he going to try to show off what this Georgia Bulldogs team has in Luther Burden's backyard? and show them what they can do to try to recruit him live on the field. I can't say no. Luther Burden is questionable for this game. Um, he suffered an injury against the uh, Auburn Tigers. Suffered an How injury against Abilene Christian. Ball? Well, that's why he didn't get the ball. He's supposed <laughs> to only return punts. Well, at least at least that's what Drinkwitz said, which, honestly, the right thing for Drinkwitz to say, if we're, if we're thinking about it, if he doesn't get the ball, you have to say, oh, yeah, it's because he was hurt, not because I didn't call any plays for him. Uh, that's what you're supposed to say in that circumstance. Uh, but yeah, we'll see if he plays. Um, he sent out, he did the whole Instagram thing and then sent out a tweet saying like, Hey, that wasn't what I meant by this. Um, to kind of clear it up and everything like that would maybe feel a little bit better, but, uh, he cannot actually officially enter the transfer portal until the end of the year. But Maddie, I don't know if you saw this new rule, this new rule that came out about the transfer portal graduates. So if you have graduated, 
and you're playing like this year, you can already enter the transfer portal. So like if yes. you're a graduate and you're playing and you're like, you know what, this isn't it, I'm going to transfer. You can put your name in the transfer portal already, um, which yes. I think that's a relatively new rule. Um, but yeah, that's a very interesting wrinkle to add. It is. Um, that, so yeah, he's not. All right, here, let me ask you this. Okay. What is your confidence level on a one, zero to 100 scale that Luther Burton stays in Missouri beyond this season? Mm, I'd I think at this point I'm at like a 50. I think it's a 50, 50 okay. chance. Uh, yeah. I think it's 50, 50 at this point. If, if he doesn't ha- get like more touches or um, doesn't feel, I, I don't know. And obviously yeah. it's hard, it's hard to know because like where he is in the program and everything, but people close to him have said that he just hasn't even thought about it. So, but I think it's right. a 50, 50. Yeah. Okay. Um, prospects to watch in this game. Um, same thing as us. We're going to gloss over some Missouri guys a little bit quicker because we keep talking about them every week. Um, I do think Tyron Hopper, transfer linebacker from Florida, has been yep. a lot better for Missouri than he was for Florida. He was a bad football player for it. He just was. But he's been a lot better at Missouri. He's been very competent. Across from him is a, is, is a freak of nature. Darnell Washington, backup tight end for Georgia. Six foot seven, 265 pounds. You all remember him leaping over people, opening weekend versus Oregon. This dude is one of the best, just raw athletes. He's, he, you know, he's maybe not uh, Jordan Davis level of freakish athlete or Trevon Walker, but like he's a tight end version that's pretty darn close, close to those guys who's maybe not being utilized the best. Huh. Wonder who that sounds like is Trevon Walker's had a really good start to his, you know, NFL career. So just he's another guy, just fun to watch, man. He's a massive dude. You want to see a tight end come out there and kick some people's butt trying to block. And then you want to see him make some freakishly athletic plays. Darnell Washington, tune in, watch him. You can't miss him. He looks like the Hulk out there in the Georgia Bulldogs uniform. And all of the Georgia players are freaks. Like they all look crazy, but he still somehow stands out even on that team when you just see those guys out there in pads. Does he wear zero? Is that his number? I believe so. That's a <laughs> I believe he's a number. big zero. That's just the best number uh, for a huge tight end to wear is number yes, zero. Yes, a big zero. If I remember right, I think he was a wide receiver commit coming out of high school too. Like, So he probably weighed only like 250 instead of 270. But still, can you just imagine? Yeah, oh, unreal. Man. So this spread, Georgia minus 29, UGA and both Mizzou are 2-2 two and two against the spread. Uh, Maddie, what are you taking here? 29 points. 29 is too much. I'm sorry. 29 is too much for <sighs> – I don't – did Bama beat Vanderbilt by 29? I don't remember the final score of that game. And like Vanderbilt's kind of the lowest. Um, I don't care. I'm taking Georgia. I don't think you come <laughs> off of that game. I don't think you come off of that game and come out here and let Missouri even come close to hanging around. I think Kirby's going to be out for blood, similar to Nick Saban is when they have a rough game. I think there is a little bit of, hey, we're now in SEC play. Let's show everybody that we're the boss. I, I will lay, I will take Georgia laying the points. I don't even care how many it is. Yeah. I'm going to go Mizzou plus 29 uh, just because I think that that is a lot of points. I I think Ohio State plays Rutgers this week, if if I'm right. And I think that line is like 32 and a half. So I saw that and I was like, hey, at least I think Mizzou is better than Rutgers. Um, so uh, Bama beat Vandy 55 to three. So, yeah, definitely take it. Definitely take it. Georgia minus 29. Yeah. That's fine. I'll I'll <laughs> I'll, I'll I'll die on the Mizzou, Mizzou plus twenty nine hill. Um, okay, that's a that's one where we differ. So that's good. Uh, KCSNU watch schedule here. Let's go with some games nationally. We got our eyes on these are the big TV games that we're gonna have our eyes on. Then we'll get to some a couple wild card games. So Maddie, uh, the noon time slot, the eleven a.m. time slot. Uh, can number seven Kentucky travels to number 14 Old Miss in Oxford, Mississippi? That'll be on ESPN. This is this is a good matchup. I I I, I think this is gonna be a really good game. I love this game. Um, I like the Ole Miss Rebels. I have a soft spot for Lane Kiffin. I think now that he kind of got separated from the NFL, NFL and the USC stuff, he's rebranded himself really well. I I really like him as a coach and like just his what seems to be his personality. So I'm always gonna, you know slant towards Ole Miss and these things. And it's a fun team to watch. And they're different than past. This isn't spread it out, throw the ball down the field. Lane Kiffin's tossing his clipboard 30 yards in the air on the sideline every play. They run the heck out of the ball. They rely on this quality offensive line. They play good defense, really good defense. And they run the ball with a lot of guys. They're freshman running back. Um, I got to look over at his name now. Quinshawn Judkins 
they have two running backs that are probably going to be drafted this year. One of which really high. We're going to talk about a little bit, but this freshman running back is the best of the bunch. Like they have three running backs that are going to play in the NFL currently on this team. Like it's a fun team across them. You have Kentucky. It's the same Kentucky team. that has been there since Mark Stoops got there physical. They're going to try to run the ball. The offensive line maybe isn't what it has been before. I think Ole Miss is playing Kentucky football, but doing so better. So, I mean, mm. that's the way I look at it right now. You have two physical teams that want to run the ball that are going to play good, solid defense. I think Ole Miss is just playing that type of football better right now, but it'll still be a fun smash mouth um, SEC game. It's just you usually don't think of Ole Miss in a smash mouth football game. Right. Yeah. Lane Kiffin has really uh, rebranded himself. Well, I think uh, Eli Drinkwitz is trying to become Lane Kiffin is really what it, what it is. Um, I, and I can't blame him. That's a good bit. It's a good bit. It is. It is a good bit. And it's not really translating on the football field side <laughs> of things or the side that it needs to translate to. Uh, but yeah, I like this game and, I, and I'll, I'll probably have more about the line than I do about this game when we go to talk about the line. But Maddie, who are your players to watch? So I alluded to it. They have a couple running backs here, but um, for Ole Miss, I, I love Zach Evans. He's a transfer from TCU. Mm -hmm. He was actually a five-star running back recruit who prolonged his recruiting process and kind of pissed off a lot of people. Went to TCU. It took him a while to kind of get ready and get his foot in the door there. But then he was really good at TCU in limited reps. It was hard for him to stay healthy. He now goes to Ole Miss. Over, over his career, he's averaged seven yards per carry at TCU and then now at Ole Miss. Like, oh. this man is good. He's 5'11", 195 pounds. So he's not the biggest guy, but he runs behind his pads well. Elusive. Like, I really like Zach Evans. The hard part with Ole Miss is they have so many running backs. It's by committee. You don't get to see him 24-7. But I love him. And you know, for Kentucky, they always have a couple good linebackers. I think DeAndre Square is one to watch right now, especially when we're talking about the run game. Without Kentucky's you know, starting best defensive lineman playing, I think that you might have to have that linebacker group and Square really step up to slow down Evans and Judkins and the rest of this Ole Miss rushing attack. When I look at this game and I see Ole Miss favored by seven points, Kentucky ranked number seven, Ole Miss ranked number 14, it's pretty easy to look at this game and be like, hey, something's up here. There's something that these bookmakers don't know that we or that, that they know that we don't know if they're saying Mississippi minus seven. Um, if you think a better team, you, right, I mentioned earlier already on the show, minus three is usually what you get. You usually get a field goal at home. Um, which I think would be probably a more appropriate line for this game. It would be minus three. But Ole Miss favored by seven makes me wonder, makes me think what they know that I don't know about this game. Um, so it's one of those that I'm a little weary of uh, when it comes to picking it necessarily, especially when it comes to the spread. For me personally, I'm probably going to put Kentucky money line on it uh, just because I don't think the points will matter all that much and the better values at the money line. Um, so I think I give my, my pick away by saying Kentucky minus or plus the seven points. I'll take that. I think it's going to be, I think Kentucky's going to, going to win this game. I like Kentucky. I know you like Ole Miss, uh, Maddie, what do you think? Yeah. So we're going to take the same pick. I'm also going to take Kentucky because of what I essentially said, I think these two teams play a similar brand of football. When you run the ball a lot and you play good defense, you're probably going to get closer football games, right? I don't foresee either one of these teams pulling away unless the only thing I could see happening that would cause this to be more than a one score game is Lane Kiffin has literally just been keeping everything in a bag as they played inferior <laughs> comp competition because they've played nobody really right yeah. Tulsa was their biggest competition they've played nobody is Lane Kiffin literally just sitting there literally with a bag and he's just going to start pulling out all of his crazy concepts that result in him celebrating on the sideline and mid play that's the only way I see it being more than one score so I will take Kentucky because I don't know if that's going to happen that said, if I were playing the money line, I'm giving Ole Miss. I think Ole Miss wins this game. I don't, I don't, the seven's wild to me, but I think it's going to be, I think it's going to be a close game with a lot of running. I think Ole Miss has a better offensive line. I think Ole Miss's running backs are better, even though Chris Rodriguez is back for Kentucky. That's big for them. I think Ole Miss still has the better group of running backs. I think that defense is playing a little bit or close enough to as good as Kentucky's that that offensive line takes it. So Kentucky with the points, but I would go Ole Miss to actually win the game. Let's move on to the afternoon slate, 2.30. You got number two Alabama traveling to Fayetteville, Arkansas, to take on the number 20, the Arkansas Razorbacks. The Hogs coming off a tough loss last week. Uh, Alabama, that'll be on CBS. That is, this is the SEC primetime game uh, that you got here. The, the good old 2.30 time slot on CBS. I think that now this spread, we'll get to the spread later. I think this game is going to be closer than a lot of people think. What do you think, Manny? 
Who? Um, so this is an interesting matchup. Uh, the last time that Alabama played a team that has talent that is almost equal to them, I'm not as good, but like it's real top in talent was Texas, and we saw how that game went. Alabama's offensive line got pushed around. Alabama's defensive line couldn't dominate. Even you know Will Anderson very good, Dallas Turner very good, but they weren't that so dominant that Texas couldn't run their offense. You could see Alabama's corners were challenged by athleticism. So like. Arkansas finally can present another similar challenge. I think Arkansas's offensive line might be one of the best ones that uh, Alabama is going to see all year. Like that's a good offensive line that Arkansas has out there. So I could see some similar challenges that you saw versus Texas show up for uh, Alabama in this game against Arkansas. That said, I love KJ Jefferson. I think he's a lot of fun, very fun in college football. He probably is going to go on to the NFL as a quarterback. Don't get them that he's going to play quarterback in the NFL. Don't know what level. I don't think he's as good as Quinn Ewers looked to start that game, which I think is really what put Bama on their heels. I don't know if it'll be that close, though. That's that's where it comes. That's where the big question comes. Yeah. So Alabama's favored by 17 points on the road. So you get you're going to give 17 points to an Arkansas team. It's at home. Mm. Uh, that's a little dangerous, in my opinion. This this is a game uh, that as you mentioned, Maddie, I think it's going to be close. I like KJ Jefferson too. They played Texas A&M really close, that which was essentially a home game for Texas A&M. Uh, I I like. I mean, I, I can't say that I like Arkansas because they're Mizzou's rival, obviously. But uh, the direction of the program and the way that Sam Pittman's taken that program is is something that uh, Mizzou probably envies. I'll be honest. Uh, the oh, way sure. that that program has has gone. So. Um, prospects to watch. I know these guys, these two, both these teams have some dudes. Obviously, when you talk about Alabama, Arkansas has got a couple uh, studs of their own. So, who do you got your eye on, Patty? The transfer game. Um, Jameer Gibbs, <laughs> running back for Alabama, comes in from Georgia Tech. He hasn't got the a ton of the rushing work. He's been productive, but you know, only 25 carries this year after 140 last year for Georgia Tech. But it's the receiving ability. It was 17 receptions. I think everybody's going to remember him against Texas, kind of being their entire offense to start the game. Jameer Gibbs, very much on the Alvin Kamara-like track of college production, of just super efficient with receiving and rushing, just maybe the volume isn't always there. Then across from him, Drew Sanders transfers from Alabama to Arkansas, (laughs) has arguably been one of the most impressive defensive players um, all season long so far. Hybrid outside-inside linebacker, he was recruited as a five-star athlete that didn't really have a position. I think Bama struggled to figure out where to fit him in. He goes to Arkansas, he moved to inside linebacker but he also rushes a lot so like is he an outside linebacker inside linebacker i don't know but can he match up with jameer gibbs when they release him out into the flats when they have him run routes i think that matchup of super athlete you know super five-star level athletes going against each other in the open field is going to be a fun one to watch i probably spoiled my pick already uh alabama is favored by 17 points alabama is three and one against the spread this season arkansas two and two against the spread this season I'm taking the Hogs plus 17. That's a lot of points to give a home dog. Um, I know Alabama's good. Arkansas, you know, it's a, this is a top 25 matchup, and you're favoring Alabama by 17 points on the road. Um, I know that Alabama's good. I know it's Alabama. But 17 seems like a lot, especially on the road. I think 17 is specifically a lot when you're dealing with um, at least a push or even Arkansas being probably better on both uh, on the trenches on both sides. I yeah. think Arkansas's defensive line should have find some success against Alabama's offensive line. I don't think Alabama's defensive line is going to completely dominate Arkansas's. So you give the home, you're giving the home team that many points, 17 points when they might be able to win the trench battle on both sides. I, yeah, I'm taking the points with Arkansas as well, just because of that specific matchup. I love it. Uh, let's move on to the primetime game. Number 10 Ooh. NC state versus number five Clemson top 10 matchup going down in Clemson, South Carolina. This will be on ABC. Uh, is this where they're at for game day? Um, they are. First day time in Clemson since like 2016 or something. As good as Dang. Clemson's been. This is like the first time they've been there in like five, six, seven years. Wow. Um, I, I saw that and I was like, they should they should certainly be there. Uh, good matchup. I like the Cincy State team. I think that they're, they're a good squad. Clemson, I'm a little bit lower on. Um, as you know, Maddie, especially last week, I had them losing to Wake Forest and they... Almost did it. Almost did it for me. Uh, those Demon Deacons. But what do you think about uh, this matchup? This is one of the least <laughs> exciting, like college game day <laughs> top ten matchups you can get. This is like up there with Texas A&M and Miami for me. Like 
I don't mm. anticipate this game being a lot of fun to watch, especially coming off of that Clemson weight game, which was just a blast. And th- this isn't even to say that I don't want to just watch good defensive football, which I think you might see here. It's just, I imagine both of these teams offenses are just going to slog up and down the field. They might even score some points, but I don't think any of it will become easy. Nothing will be fun. All both these teams are physical, athletic, strong up front. They have good coaching staffs that kind of want to control the ball. I just think it's going to be a, a, a slow moving game that doesn't have a lot of points. I hope that DJU can capitalize on a good performance last week and maybe get back to some of that hype that had him, you know, being considered a top end QB prospect, but him and Dennis Leary have both been underperforming. Two guys that a lot of people had as their, some of their top quarterbacks coming into this year. Both have been disappointing. I don't know if this is the game they get right, and it could just it could just be ugly. It could just be an ugly game. It kind of has that that little uh, that vibe to it, certainly. Uh, DJU, I remember when coming in, people were saying he was better than Trevor Lawrence, and that's a lot of hype to live up to when it people is. are saying you're better than Trevor Lawrence. Is Trevor Lawrence probably the best quarterback in Clemson history? I'd say um, tough to argue with that. But yeah, uh, I, I, for some reason, I, I like to cheer against Clemson. Um, <laughs> so I'm, I'm going to be on the pack this week. I, I just like to see Clemson lose. I don't know why. It's just one of those schools. You don't actually, like Dabo. It's fair. It's, you don't actually, like Dabo. It's fair. That's a hundred percent why I don't like Dabo. Yeah, no, I know why. Um, so Maddie, who are, who are some of these guys you got your eye on this week? Uh, so it, there, this is difficult, right? Because I don't think. We just talked about Clemson. I don't know if there's a great one-on-one uh, matchup for this particular one. So like just in general, Clemson's defensive line versus NC State's offensive line, I think is kind of where it's going to go. So, you know, we talked about Clemson's defensive line with Miles Murphy and they have Xavier Thomas is still there. I think this could be a Brian Breeze, Breezy, Breeze weekend as defensive tackle across from him for the NC State quality offensive line. He's going to have, I think Derek Eason actually got replaced by Dylan McManon. And I think he's been really good. Um, so, the entire interior, I, it's not a need for the Chiefs or anything, but the entire offensive line for NC State has experience. They've played guard. They've played tackle. They had one guy that's transferred in, but besides that, it's the same four starters of last year. It's a quality unit versus a really good Clemson D-line. Clemson's D-line wasn't dominant versus Wake. What is this good offensive line going to do to him? I think Brian Breesey is the guy I kind of expect to step up in this one, be a little bit more disruptive than he was last week, and that could hopefully tilt it in their favor if you are a Clemson fan. The spread is Clemson minus six and a half. Uh, home team minus six and a half. This line's a little bit better than the other ones. I like a six and a half a little bit better than I like a seven and a half. What do you like on this one, Maddie? I am taking NC State, and I'm not a big NC State believer. I don't know if I think NC State's that good. I think they're well enough coached. They execute well enough that they will keep this game close. And I don't think Clemson is the kind of team, as we've seen so far this year, when they play quality opponents, they're not out there to blow teams out. They're not out there to run up the score because they don't have they don't have it this year to do that. I think it's close. I think it's slow. I think it's ugly. I will always take the points when that's the case, especially if it's going to be against two top 10-ish teams. Even if I don't love NC State going forward, they just give me a lot of like Pittsburgh like the Pittsburgh team that we've seen the past couple seasons where they're never going to get blown out. It might not always look good. They clearly look like the worst team, but it'll always be close. Clemson one and three against the spread this season. That's why I'm taking NC state. Uh, now the, now the Wolfpack are two and two against the spread, but being one and three against the spread, I'm going to take the Wolfpack all day, every day, Matt, do you want me to start with my wild card game or do you want to do your wild game? Okay. Yeah, no, go ahead. Let's let's run yours off because it's a bigger matchup. Mine's mine's more of a fun. Yours is this is a much bigger matchup. All right, let's talk about it. Number nine, Oklahoma State travels to Waco, Texas to take on number 16, Baylor. Big matchup in the Big 12. Has a lot of Big 12 implications already. At what is this? Week five of the uh of the college football season? Week five. Okay, this- now, I want to ask you one question. Go if ahead. I offered you this statement, Oklahoma State, Baylor, Oklahoma, or the field to win the Big 12. You're taking one of those three teams to the field to win the Big 12. So Oklahoma, Oklahoma State. Baylor. Baylor or the field. Mm-hmm. Oklahoma State. So you would take the, the, the trio of teams versus the yep. field. Okay. Intrigued. Yeah, I think Intriguing. I would. I think I think one of those three win. Uh, and I think fair. Oklahoma State's the more likely, to be honest. Maybe I'm maybe I'm higher on Oklahoma State than a lot of people are. Uh, I don't know why. K State fans, I, that's at Tucker D Franklin. Um, yeah. at Tucker D Franklin. K State fans. Yeah, they, listen, they already know who I am. Um, <laughs> they are already well aware of me. Um, 
I think that Oklahoma State, Oklahoma, Baylor, good teams. I think Baylor was picked third in the preseason poll, if I remember correctly. They were picked high. Um, higher than I would have put them up there, but Baylor's been a very confusing team this year. Should have beat BYU. Uh, BYU, who did, the, who did BYU lose to in Oregon, right? Uh, they got watched yeah, by Oregon. Beat down, yeah. They got beat down by Oregon. Uh, Oregon got beat down by Georgia. So it's like all over the place this season is already. Um, but Baylor goes, they beat Iowa State. Oklahoma State, I don't think they've really played anybody this year. Um, off the top of my head, I don't have their schedule up in front of me, but I don't I, – is this their first Big 12 game or – uh, yeah, they, they're coming. They're coming off a bye. They beat Central That's Michigan, right. which got close at the end, but they were blowing them out. Arizona State, they blew out, and then uh, Arkansas, Arkansas Pine, Bluff. Pine Bluff. Yeah, so they haven't played anybody yet. This is going to be their first real test. That can be tough, especially going on the road against a it's against a ranked team. Uh, Maddie, you put down a couple players to watch here. I did. So Oklahoma State has a stud defensive end. He won freshman mm-hmm. of the year last year. That means he's not draft eligible. So we have to look to other guys that play defensive end with him. Um, Tyler Lacey actually is like a 3-4 defensive end, defensive tackle, 5-tech kind of guy, but really good player. He might be their actual best draft prospect this year along the defensive line. Baylor's offensive line, very good. Connor Galvin, I believe, won the Big 12 Offensive Lineman of the Year last year. He's playing left tackle for Baylor when those two are matched up. That's two guys that are looking to be top 100 picks in the NFL draft going against each other. So, you know, I'd keep my eyes in the trenches of this game, which is funny to say keep your eyes in the trenches of a Big 12 game. But I mean, that's the way the Big 12 is trending that way a little bit. They're getting more physical yeah. out there. So uh, it's, it's an exciting physical matchup to watch from those two guys. I think so too. I'm doing a I'm doing a quick little uh, live look up here and see if Baylor okay. Baylor is two and zero oh when they are a home favorite against the spread. Um, keep that in mind. Baylor is two and zero oh home favorite against the spread. They are favored in this game minus two and a half points. But I'm taking Okie State. I'm taking Ooh. the two and a half points. I'd probably take I'd probably take Okie State straight up money line uh, because I like. These Cowboys, Spencer Sanders, I believe was named uh, is an all Big 12 quarterback preseason. And I think he won all Big 12 last year quarterback, but I don't know if there were a whole lot of options last year uh, when it came down to it at the end of the year for all Big 12 uh, honors. So I like them. I like Mike Gundy. uh, And I like when Gundy's put in situations like this, I think his teams can respond. I yeah I, I'm glad I don't have to pick this game because I don't want to choose between Mike Gundy and Dave Miranda and it's, but this, yeah. these two teams played twice last year both of them went in like entirely differently um so yeah it's a fun game to watch definitely tune in what well, this game was in the middle of the day right yeah it's the middle of the game yep. so if you're not into Alabama Arkansas if you hate SEC bias then you, you have a good option to watch mm-hmm. um my wild card game I kind of I was looking the primetime slate this week is bad you kind of get stuck with NC State Clemson or nobody and I've already said I think that game will be ugly So if you want to put up a second screen and have some fun while you watch that gross game, Cincinnati travels to Tulsa, Oklahoma to take on Tulsa, the Golden Hurricanes. Now, anyone that's not familiar, you know, with these two teams, they've played a lot over the last couple of years while Cincinnati has been really good and they've been really good games. Tulsa has given Cincinnati everything they can have. Tulsa this year has a great offense. They have a quarterback who's slinging it. They have multiple wide receivers on this team. Cincinnati's in a little bit of a bounce back year, right? They're coming off of having a bunch of draft picks, a playoff, you know, venturing into the playoffs. Like they're still trying to figure some stuff out. They lost what, like five players off their defense last year, like four more the year before. Like this team is definitely turning over talent, but they still have defensive talent. I think this is going to be. You want fun. You want to see offense. You want to maybe see the two teams that you haven't watched five times already this year play. Tune in for Cincinnati at Tulsa. Prospect-wise, the Cincinnati secondary. Um, Arquan Bush has played nickel for them the past couple seasons with Kobe Bryant, Colby Bryant and um, uh, Sauce Gardner on the outside. He's now flipped outside. He's playing the field corner. They will play field and boundary, so he covers more space. But then they also have Javon Hicks, who's a safety who's been playing for them. Tulsa, I mentioned, has a bunch of wide receivers. I think the guy I'm most interested in, Memphis transfer, uh, I sorry, Kentucky transfer, Isaiah Epps. Um, he's one wide receiver. J.C. Santana is another one. They've been slinging it. These guys are putting up points. They scored 27 on Ole Miss, who I don't think had allowed more than like 13 points before that. Granted, not great competition, but still, this offense can play. Cincinnati's defense can defense. This will be a fun game. Now, 
Bearcats, Cincinnati Bearcats, the unofficially official team of the KCSN Discord last year is favored by 10. Can I ride with the ex-girlfriend, the ex-team, KCSN Discord team, laying 10 points on the road? Nah, give me Tulsa. Give me that offense getting 10 points at home. I think Cincinnati wins. I think it's a one-score game because these two teams always play it close, and I think Tulsa's offense can actually pressure Cincy's defense in a way that a lot of other teams Cincinnati's played so far can't. Looking back at our picks here, I picked oh. all dogs. Ooh. I did not pick one favorite. You picked Ooh. one favorite, and it was Georgia. Um, so Ooh. we but love the dogs. The, college football is getting farther into the year. We can start to see how these games are getting closer. We're picking the best games to watch, right? So theoretically, yes. they should all be closer. When you get into close games and you have – when we get what we expect to be good close games, you see a team getting extra more points than you think a close game says. Yeah, yeah, take the dogs. Love taking the dogs. Usually gets you more money too when the dogs. Got that dog hit. in them. Got that dog in them. Uh, Maddie, any final thoughts before we let the people go? Tune in. I don't know when this is up. You either watched our Uskies win last night or you're about to watch them win tonight. Let's go, Washington. Let's get it. The, get your Washington gear. We are Huskies fans for the rest of the season, guys. We are indeed. That is going to do it for this week's KCSNU kickoff. Thank you for tuning in, sticking around all the way to the end of the episode. Make sure to like, subscribe, all that good stuff. Share it with your friends so they can find KCSNU. Maddie and I will be back next week to break down the, the next week's slate of games. So until then, we'll talk to you later.